It's new. And it's new. All right. What's new? All right. Let's start off with this little potentiometer. It's actually a JP requested item. Uh, he was using these in his Grand Central uh, MIDI project. And I was like, yeah, those are kind of cool. I've seen these in some, like, you know, little synthesizer projects. Um, it's a potentiometer, but what's nice about it is, first off, it's very compact. And second, it has a marking on the side. So, um, go yeah, go to the overhead. It has a little, um, a notch in here, which you can paint white if you like. It's got a little marking on the side. So, um, you know, you can uh, put this into a PCB or you can actually plug it into a breadboard if you like. It's got about 0.1 inch spacing. And uh, the mark on the side will uh, tell you where it's at. So you don't even need a knob because it's got this kind of nice knurled uh, top to it. So, and then you yeah, this this pointer as well. So all the way up and then all the way down. Actually, so it's, it's upside down. So all the, this is at the lowest and at the highest. Nice little knob, easy to use, uh, and you can use for any project. It comes in 10K linear. Here's a case. Here's a case. This is a case from uh, Element 14. And it's actually pretty nice. I don't see, like, there's some USB Pi accessories that I'm like, wow, you're really um, kind of making up the need here. This is pretty cool. Um, so first off, it's in a very nice enclosure to start with. So you get a very nice case. On top of that, uh, it comes with this really cool control board that does quite a few things. And I have the control board here on the overhead because I'm going to point to things. So this is the case uh, that you get. So you put a Raspberry Pi in. You put a Raspberry Pi in. Okay. And then it so has have this all control the, board. You have all these exposed, you know, the USB and, and all that good stuff. Um, and the HDMI and the AV. So it's a very nice injection molded enclosure. Another nice thing, it's got this um, camera port here, which you can kind of see. So this, the camera um, very carefully sort of slots in uh, nice. into this little slot and it has a, a hole for the lens. So let me see if I can get this back in. Because it doesn't like clip strongly, it just sort of slides in. There you go, like that. And so you can now have um, your camera. So if you want to make a camera connected Raspberry Pi, and this is just a standard Raspberry Pi camera kit. Um, so yeah, so you have the Raspberry Pi and then um, yeah, I've got the camera in. If you want to connect, of course, a display if you'd like, and maybe pass it out, uh, you know, one of these side uh, notches. But it comes with, the, what you're really getting for the, the value is um, this add-on board. And this add-on board has a couple things going for it. Um, it's got a little buck converter here, so it's got a power input with uh, like a circuitry for protection on the um, power input, which is kind of nice. There's a USB to SATA converter, so you can get an SSD drive and plug it in. So if you don't want to use um, the uh, micro SD slot, maybe you want a lot more storage or maybe you don't want to worry, you know, worry about the SD card getting corrupted, you can uh, get a SATA drive and plug that in and it's got a USB 2 to SATA converter. Uh, it's not going to be like full, full speed because it's still the only USB 2, but it's still pretty fast. I mean, the Raspberry Pi is an incredibly fast computer. It's also got a uh, STM8 microcontroller that's pre-programmed. Um, and this controls the button and the LED. And um, this is like a smart button. So it will, uh, it has some firmware, so it'll like properly shut down your um, Raspberry Pi. And then the LED, there's a light pipe and it glows at the top and it looks really cool. So you can have this um, LED that is, uh, lights up the ring and you can see it. I think we have a photo um, that shows the ring lit up. Um, you can also reprogram the microcontroller yeah, you can see it's glowing blue. It's really nice. I took this apart, but imagine that it was put together. Um, you reprogram the mic controller if you'd like. It looks like there is a little reprogramming port. And um, it's got standoffs. Oh, it's also got a real-time clock. It's got a PCF8523, which I really like. It's a, it's a uh, very simple but effective real-time clock. And there's uh, dr uh, drivers built into the Linux kernel for it. And there's a little coin cell holder. You get a, a battery with it uh, that you can then uh, plug in for um, a real-time clock so it keeps time even when it's unplugged. And there's a little adapter that uh, when this plugs in to the hat, so it just kind of goes in like this, and then this goes in here. Hold on. It's actually kind of hard to do this while on camera. So this plugs in, like so, okay. And then this is a little adapter that plugs from the SATA 
oh, to the um, USB. So it's a cute, uh, very uh, neat adapter. I'm actually kind of interested to see where. That's a good I think idea. this would be very handy for some um, hats and devices. Yeah. And then um, there's uh, some screws that you can use to um, more permanently attach it. Um, you can pretend like this is attached. And then this is uh, this goes on top. And then, you know, I can uh, plug this in. I don't think it has, it doesn't have a um, operating system on it. But hopefully if I didn't mess this up, it should light up. Or if that is connected to power, yes. Yeah, so, so you go, you see the LED, and then the LED shines out nicely when you press the button to turn it on. So it's a nice little closure for your Raspberry Pi. I like it. Um, it's you know, there's a lot of cases very simple, but this is a very nice advanced case, and you're you get quite a bit for uh, what you're purchasing. Not only the enclosure, but also this SATA controller, real-time clock. Yeah. Really mix it into a full computer. Okay. Next up, next up we have the analog devices ADXL 343. One of our first breakouts was the ADXL 345, which is a very popular digital uh, accelerometer. Analog devices is kind of invented the MEMS accelerometer, so they're really good at this stuff. Um, this accelerometer was featured in the Neo Trellis um, M4, which was in a previous Ada box. Um, but this accelerometer is nice. It's a really good price. I mean, basically, it took the 345. Um, it's almost exactly compatible. It's almost the same exact specs, and. Uh, it's almost drop-in compatible too. The driver is uh, nearly identical as well. Same range of motion, same I squared C and um, SPI interface. Level shifting is built in. Uh, we have Arduino and CircuitPython drivers for it. And uh, it comes in red because this was a, a breakout sponsored by DigiKey and Analog Devices. We made it DigiKey Red in their honor. So we're not, we're not yeah. gonna do a lot of red boards, but we do when DigiKey. Yeah. Helps us design and thank you, them. DigiKey and Analog. Um, they made the last Ada box possible and also powered the, one of the coolest features in it that people talk about all the time. So this is the breakout board okay. that goes along with all that. Okay. Yes. Check that out. And speaking out. of, that code, remember, USB-C, this is why. Zip. Uzbek, why? Well, we finally have the USB-C breakout. Well, we sold out, but we have these ready in the store. And um, I'm just going to talk about them here because it's just a small breakout. So USB-C is kind of the new thing. It is one port that is flippable. It, you know, you can put the connector in either way. It can be used for both upstream and downstream. So instead of like USB normal, where you have a, the rectangular A for the uh, central, and then the peripherals have micro B or mini B, you have one connector for everything. So this first breakout um, is designed for people who want to make peripherals, like downstream, like microcontrollers that connect to computers. So it's got these resistors. It uses resistors to signal whether it's an upstream or downstream connection. This one has downstream resistors already soldered on. You get the uh, power and ground connections that you would normally expect. Um, the resistors are set up to give you five volts at you know at least a half an amp. You get D plus and D minus as normal, and then we also break out the four sideband and um, configuration pins. You can use those to detect um, orientation. Or if you want to change the resistor values, you can connect resistors from uh, those pins to SBUS if you want to uh, change the resistor values. But basically, this is designed um, specifically for people who want to get a USB peripheral. So you would connect this to your computer and connect that VBUS, D plus, D minus line to your SAM D processor or your whatever microcontroller that has native USB support. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Next up. Next up, more e-inks. We love e inks, and people were asking, wow, these e inks are so cool, but wouldn't it be great if you had an e ink feathering? And we're like, yeah. So the 2.13 inch e ink uh, trackball display is almost at the same size as the feather wing. So it actually made a perfect size uh, feather add on. So you plug a feather into the bottom, it's all fully assembled, um, and uh, you can plug any feather into it. It's been tested with all feathers. And uh, we have full graphical support, and you can also display uh, bitmaps on it. Um, if you look at the bottom, can you go to the bottom photo? Yeah. We have a micro SD card slot, so you can store images or fonts or whatever you want on there for display. We also have um, all the power supply stuff you need and an SRAM chip. The SRAM chip is what acts like as a video RAM buffer. So you can even um, use this display with something as simple as an Atmega 328 or 32U4. Normally you need about 6K to buffer 
the red and black data for the tri-color e-ink. Um, these displays don't let you update one pixel at a time. You have to update the entire display. So you have to store all of that data. And you'll notice a lot of low-cost e-ink breakouts in displays. They kind of don't mention this, but they force you to like somehow buffer the entire display and, and, and send it all at once, which is like basically impossible unless you have a ton of RAM. So what's nice about this is, this is a demo showing drawing lines. Um, all of that is buffered and handled for you, so you don't have to worry about your memory usage. Um, the library will store the display buffer in this external SRAM chip, and then when you're ready to send it to the display, it'll send it all out at once, and then you can go to sleep. So it you know, means you don't have to um, store anything long-term. You can also display bitmaps off the SD card. Um, you'll see it does take like 15 seconds to display an image. That's normal. Um, these tricolor displays aren't meant to be updated constantly. They're meant to be kind of you set them and then maybe an hour later set to something else. So good for IoT devices or informational displays where you know you're not you're not trying to display animations or videos. You just want to say, hey, you know, here's the temperature. And if, or, if there's, there's no power, whatever was on the display last is that that's that's what's on the display. Yeah, that's right. So. Um, you know, I'll wait till this finishes just so it looks nice. When this is done, you can unplug the power, you know, or you can um, have it enable disable pin or something. Yeah. Um, and the display set is the same. So this is great for low power. Outdoor displays, you want visibility. This is very high contrast. It looks just like paper. You know, it, looks, it looks great from any angle. It looks great outside when it's bright. Um, yeah. Uh, it doesn't use a lot of power. And then, yeah, it works with any feather wing display just... Uh, any feather wing, just plug in the feather onto the back, and we have our existing libraries and the pins are all connected. So you can use it with the ESP8266, 32, 328, U4, Teensy, whatever you want. Okay. And the star of the show tonight, besides the Adafruit community, all y'all out there, and Lady Ada, is this. It's Pi Portal. We're putting in a bunch in the store as fast as we can make them. These, uh, the Hotcake Factory called us and they said, we would like to sell things as fast as pie portals. Yes, so, they did sell like hotcakes. We put in yeah. we put in over a hundred, and they sold very very. They're fast. pretty fast. We're, we're making more. more. Yeah, we put in a bunch, and then so, some of our, our our friends out there have received theirs. Who are helping us do some things. And we on also it. have the guide. So if you're interested, you can read the guide to get an idea of what yeah. you're getting into. So this pairs a 3.2 inch, 320 by 240 color display with a resistive touchscreen. Um, and on the back, to do all the processing, we've got a SAMD51, and it's like the kind of the highest end one. It's one megabyte of flash, 256K of RAM. And that's the main processor, and that's controlling the TFT display over an 8-bit interface. It also has eight megabytes of QSPY flash. So with CircuitPython, you can have eight megabytes of flash for your images or um, uh, uh, sounds or fonts or whatever. Um, there's also an SD card slot, so you can add more. Uh, storage. There's an uh, audio amplifier with a little piezo, piezo speaker, not piezo, a buzzer, a uh, little speaker, and uh, also a connector if you want to connect, uh, a mobile connector for connecting an external uh, higher powered speaker. Um, there's ports on the end. You've got two three pin Stemma connections. Each one has power ground and then an analog or digital I.O. pin. And then in the center is I squared C. And it can also be used with Grove connectors. So if you have Grove stuff, that is I squared C, you can use that there. It's got an ADT7410 temperature sensor on it, so you can do uh, temperature sensing. It's got a light sensor um, that can do light sensing, as you expect. Um, what else? It's got the, uh, of course, the, the most important part is it's got the ESP32 as a Wi-Fi coprocessor. So what's nice about this is the ESP32 is de dedicated just for doing Wi-Fi. So the ESP32 is, uh, it has enough power and memory to do SSL TLS 1.2, which is great because a lot of uh, sites now require it. It also has enough memory to buffer, um, you know, big socket connections. So what we do is we have the ESP32 dedicated just to doing that Wi-Fi connection. Why? Because it takes so much processing power and time, you really want that to be handled by a separate coprocessor while your main processor is handling UI and USB. Also, the ESP32 doesn't have native USB. So you're going to have to have some chip anyways to do USB. And um, the SAMD51 has a ton of pins. So we use those pins for the, you know, other, like all the pins are used. Like if you count up, you need like 15 pins for the back, um, the display, the backlight, APIC connection, touchscreen. You need, you know, four more pins for the SD card. You need two pins for the analog output. You need two pins for SQC. You add it all up, you actually end up needing a ton of pins 
Um, so this, this SAMD51 does all of that and the UI, circuit Python runtime. Meanwhile, the ESP32, all it does is it handles the Wi-Fi connections and sockets for you. And we communicate over SPI using this really great Nina firmware from Arduino, um, which works really well, really solid, and it has all these. Another thing that's nice about the ESP32 is it has all the certificates, the root certificates burned into it. There's a lot of space, and so it comes with all these root certificates, so you don't have to upload a certificate for every new site. It can, it, like I looked at the list, and it has just about every root cert out there, so you don't have to worry about like, oh, you know, what if I have a site and their certificate got changed? You know, as long as it is in the trusted certificate chain, which it almost certainly is, um, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, uploading certificates or ignoring certificates. You can keep your secure connections. So all together, makes for a really great all-in-one IoT device. Kind of has everything you want, but not too much stuff to make uh, internet connected IoT projects with CircuitPython, which makes it really easy and the display graphics stuff and the font management, all that which is normally really hard to do. And then the ESP32 makes the Wi-Fi really easy. We have a sockets interface. So if you're a fan of BSD sockets, congratulations, you can just use sockets. And if you've used Python before, you've probably used the requests library and that's what we've implemented in CircuitPython. So you can get and post data uh, quite easily. Um, you know, we have a lot of examples of, of getting JSON data, regular expressions data and, and parsing that. Um, and you can, because we have so much memory available on the ESP32 and the 751, you can buffer a whole like 32 or 64 kilobyte response packet, parse it into JSON, and then sift through it to get the data you want. You don't have to do weird line by line parsing. You can actually treat it as a full object. So we have some examples. So, you know, for example, you can uh, uh, download bitmaps. This is um, a project that goes to the Adafruit uh, new API. We have an API that uh, uh, feeds up all the newest products. So this is Radio Bonnet from a couple weeks ago. You can get this data from JSON and then um, this image. You could also download it, cache it to the QSPY, and then display it on the screen. So you can get... Yep. Point in a URL, gets the data, and then you just saw this is what it looks like when it flips to the next image. This used to be really hard. Um, yeah. This is one of the ones that we're working on. It took a few minutes after get all this awesome yeah everything and squeezed onto this board so, so the, you know these images they're they're not hosted locally with downloading the image yeah. uh, it takes about eight seconds to download and save a 250 uh, kilobyte image uh, through the sp32 overall secure connection and then you can display it directly onto the screen so this stuff which is normally really really hard to do without linux um, or a full operating system you can do very, very easily using um, CircuitPython, a request library, and display I.O. Okay. And that's Pipe Portal. And that is new products this week. Yay!